Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studio in Cumming, Georgia, it's time for Simon Says Let's Talk Business 2.0. Now, here's your host, Gary Zermelin. And welcome to Simon Says Let's Talk Business 2.0 radio show. Uh, on this show, we talk with high-performing business professionals to sharpen our skills, learn new ideas and concepts, share best practices, and get to know really smart people. Listen carefully, take notes, and look for their contact information at the end so that you can engage with them. As always, we will conclude with a sales tip from me at the very end. Uh, this is going to be a great show. I'm really excited about our guests that we have today. Uh, we, we got uh, Katrina here. Luchisano, and I mean, she's she's the mortgage queen. I mean, this boy, if, if you have any questions about mortgages, she's going to know some answers for you on that one. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We also have Skip Mangum here as well uh, with Flax Flooring. Uh, boy, he's been doing it for a lot of years. Anything in that world, he's going to be able to help us on that. Uh, these are two wonderful subject matter experts in this world. So it's going to be a great show. Um, why don't we start today with you, Katrina? Uh, you know, I'll just give you a little bit of background, ladies and gentlemen, about where she works with. She works with Silverton Mortgage. Uh, it, it was founded in 1998. Uh, it, Silverton Mortgage is an acknowledged industry leader within the mortgage community. Uh, they have always believed that maintaining the, the entire loan process in-house keeps everyone involved, borrower, real estate agent, and Silverton Mortgage. One team, and they have one goal, and continually being recognized with the industry's leading customer satisfaction rating. So it's a great company. Not surprised that you're working for a company like that, Katrina. But before we talk about that, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you even get into the mortgage world? Well, thank you, Gary, for having me. And um, actually, I was uh, born and raised on a dairy farm in upstate New York, had no intention of going to college. And then I, I was showing horses and my horse got hurt my senior year of high school. So I ended up going to college and then from college, um, moved from very small one stoplight town to Rochester, New York, and then met my husband at Prudential Insurance. Uh -huh. And we moved three kids um, in 1992 after the recession in Rochester to Atlanta uh, drove down here. We didn't know a soul. And my husband stayed in the insurance field. And I ended up moving into the mortgage field. Uh, my husband's good friend in Rochester, his best man at our wedding, he has a mortgage company. So he had said, oh, Katrina, you know, you'll be great in mortgages. So um, that was it. And so we ended up actually, uh, he started his own insurance agency in 1995. And I started my own mortgage broker shop in 1995. And then four years ago, uh, Silverton had approached me on uh, coming to move over there, and it was the best decision I've ever made. So they're a wonderful company, and so, very happy to be with them. So how many years have you been doing this? Then? 30. 30 <laughs> yeah. years, folks. Yeah. I mean, if experience <clears throat> speaks for anything, yes. um, you have some of that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, having all of that experience, I'm sure that gives you some advantages over the people that don't. What would be some of those advantages that you have all those years of experience? I think... Um, you really have to have a lot of years to speak with a lot of different people because no situation is the same. Even today, it's amazing that there's no two people who are alike because obviously we're all different. So everyone's situation is different. Um, and the moving, the market is a constant moving market. So we don't know what's going to work, what isn't going to work. And you need to have somebody who is accessible 24 seven, which I am, that's just my personality. And to have a company behind you that has multiple products, because again, we just have so many different needs in the industry. So we have to be available to provide um, to people so that they can enjoy home ownership. Yeah. You know, one of those things I'm thinking about, what is some advice that you would give to someone when it comes to, you know, getting a mortgage? I mean, what are some things that you would say, Hey, this is something you need to be paying attention to, or there may be some circumstances where it works against you if you're not. I think um, the biggest thing that I see is, especially with um, just everyone, they look online for the home first, and they really don't know if they can even get a mortgage. Um, for me, I would want to collect all of their income information, all of their assets. Um, it's something as simple as the other day, somebody said, oh, 
uh, this builder is requiring a $50,000 deposit. I'm going to get that from a credit card. And it's like, well, you can't take it from unsecured funds. They had Uh no clue. Um, so we need to um, have that conversation and need to be able to look at the transactions in your bank statements. And I'm like the doctor, you know, I'm not going to tell anyone. I want to know where your position is. Um, maybe it's tax time and I need to see what taxes you're going to file because you don't need to take as many exemptions mm. because then you'll have less income for qualifying. So wow. for me, I think um, the fr- the first would be to get with a mortgage professional to make sure that we have assessed your income, your assets, um, and your credit, of course, because we also can work on your credit, work on it, meaning um, help you to get the highest score possible because that will determine, A, if you can get a mortgage, and B, if you can get a mortgage, what your interest rate is going to be. See, I never thought about this. It was like, you know, find your house, you know, that you fall in love with, you know, with your realtor, then, you know, get That's your, what people do. Th- that's what yeah. I did. Yep. And that's really, that was kind of backwards. Yes. I should have been talking yes. to you before I did that because that might determine the house that I'm going to be purchasing or living in or being able to afford. Wow. Never even thought about that. Yeah. Thank you. Never even thought about that. You know, I'm sure you've heard some stories where things didn't go so well Mm -hmm. in the mortgage. Um, Tell us about that. Well, I had, unfortunately, recently, um, and she was a um, a senior citizen who lost 15,000 of earnest money because she accepted a contract. Actually, she was the buyer. So she signed a contract with no contingencies, no inspections on the home, nothing. And turned around and did a home inspection after her due diligence was mm-hmm. up. So when you write your earnest money check, after due diligence is up, you're not going to be able to get that back mm-hmm. if you have no financing contingency and no inspection contingency. And so she had inspectors come out and there was there was extensive damage that would have cost about 30000 of repairs Personally, I felt that I wouldn't want to lose fifteen thousand. I probably would have bought the home, did the thirty thousand of repairs, and then looked at you know in a couple of years down the road. But she just uh, really didn't want to do that. So you're not just giving advice on on mortgages. I mean, it sounds like you're giving a lot more advice than just that. They're my my mom, my dad, you know, my grandma, my sister you know, my kids. So yeah, I try to treat everyone like that. What would I do? So you're, you're really there to help them through the whole process. Yes. Uh, we can't always see around corners, right? But working with someone like you, it's, it's, but how many people have you done mortgages for? Do you think? Oh gosh, probably over 4,000 Four in the last yeah thousand people. I think yeah. you can see around every yeah. corner. You've seen mm-hmm. every single thing that may have happened. I think, but not really. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I think a lot of them <laughs> yeah, that, a lot, that, a lot. that I could go to yes. someone like you and, and you're going to really be helping me make the right decisions and prevent myself because you can't go back after the paperwork has been signed. Right. Exactly. Exactly. They think that they can back out and, well, the seller's going to give it back, but they don't have to. And most times they don't. Yeah. They're not going to. Buyer beware. That's type right. Of thing. So mm-hmm. it is really important to have yes. a professional subject matter expert mm-hmm. in something when that's all yes. going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the economy, you mm-hmm. know, uh, right now. I mean, we have inflation going on. Uh, stock markets have been going up and down because of interest rates. And of course, that affects your world. Yeah. Um how does that affect your world? And would be some advice you could give anyone who's wanting to purchase or sell a home now? Well, I think um, for me, I am a perfect, a perfect example where I have thought, should I sell now? But then where am I going to go? Um, but when I have conversations with real estate agents, the really the problem right now is we still don't have enough homes on the market for buyers. I have a pipeline full of pre-approved buyers, as does most of the loan officers in my in my office. Um, so I think that to look at it that if your stock stock market is down 9% or, you know, 6% year over year, well, your real estate is not. Mm. We're still climbing slightly. And let's face it, even if we don't move, then that's still better than a negative growth. Um, and you still have your interest deduction, so I still think home ownership, uh, moving forward, taking that, you know, that brave step um, to move on. I also, though, think that we need to get a little bit more um, new construction going on, inventory, because um, 
a lot of, we have a lot of people in Georgia moving here still. Mm -hmm. um, and we just need some more housing for them. Um, I know that there's a lot of apartments and some people that's fine. They would like to rent, but a lot of those people in apartments really do want to own a home. We have um, down payment assistance programs. So it's just trying to get the awareness out there uh, to people. But it starts, though, with having more homes on the market. Oh, absolutely. And that's something else, too, is that if we keep waiting for yeah. the interest rates to get lower, um, that doesn't mean the house values are getting lower. They, they're, they're going up. Exactly. So you know, when you're kind of looking at it that way, you know, waiting may not be to your advantage mm -hmm. either. Yes. And then you can always reapply. Exactly. Interest rates. Yeah. But and we're still historically low. I yeah, mean, you it's talk ridiculous. About that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember my dad, you know, they, <laughs> my mom and dad bought their home. I think they were spending close to 10%. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it, is this? No. No. It really, really isn't. We're running mid fives, um, you know, a little upwards of five. I've even heard people say over 6%. I'm not seeing that. Um, so I, when I got in the business, we were seven. And then we went, the lowest was four, and then we went back to six, and then, you know, back to three and a half, and then back to six, and then we got as low, it's under the threes, but that is just so unrealistic. And let's face it, right? It's an interest deduction, again, on your personal tax return. So that is our only deduction left besides, and we can also tax deduct our real estate taxes. Mm. So with the tax law changes, Think about that. You get to deduct your interest, even if it is a higher interest rate. That's just a greater deduction to reduce your tax liability to the IRS. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And if you're renting... Um, Nothing. Right. Yeah. And that's something to think about, too, mm -hmm. is, is that every time you're paying, you know, all of it's going to the landlord and, and none of it's going to you, mm -hmm. you know, toward your investment um, going forward. And right. Is it also possible that they could raise the, the rent on you too? Well, they are. That's the problem. So many of my pipeline of people who are approved are renters who have to move out because they're going from seventeen to eighteen to twenty two hundred to twenty four hundred a month. Mm -hmm. And trying to find that price point of a home that would be equal to that, a uh, three hundred price point, let's say, you know, Metro Atlanta, that's that sweet spot that we just need we need some homes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know a lot of companies are, are scared to build because of the uncertainty of, of the economy, well, the supply cost. chain issues, yeah. right? With yeah. lumber's high, a lot mm -hmm. of these supplies are very high. Yes. Um, but that's a problem yep. uh, when you have a lot of shortage of homes. Mm -hmm. um, we also do, though, yeah. have renovation loans. So I'm encouraging people to look at different areas where, for example, I'm in Gwinnett County. So down in Snellville, for example, the city of Snellville has gone and is upping activities in their, within their city limits for their um, um, residents. So some of the people may say, well, you know, I don't know. Some of the, the homes are maybe a little small or a little aged. Well, if you have some vision or know someone who has vision, then you could buy it, wrap a renovation loan into it. Uh -huh. And instead of having to do like a complete tear down and build, you could actually do that yourself. So makes sense. that could be an option. Sounds like you're the person that I need to be going to if I want to learn more about all of this. This has been fantastic. Um, before I let you go, why don't you share with them maybe a way of contacting you, maybe a phone number or email or a way that they can get hold of you? Well, sure. So I am, first of all, on social media, and I am Katrina, like the hurricane is how my name is spelled. Okay, we're never going to forget that now. Yeah, and the last name is Italian, L-U-C-I-S-A-N-O, and... Um, my email is a little bit strange, but it's katrina.luchasano at silvertonmortgage.com. And then my phone number, which I've had, I guess, since I moved here in 92, is 678-778-6858. And texting is awesome. Phone call. Um, I work out of my home office, so I'm always available. It sounds like you're available seven days a week. I've heard about you. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you so much for being on Thank our you. show today. This has been fantastic. Thank you for having me. And now we have Skip Mangum. So we have a flax flooring uh, that we're going to be talking with uh, here next. So I'm really excited about doing that as well. Um, let me give you a little bit of rundown on them. Now, flax flooring is uh, it, it's, it's flooring and rugs and things of that nature. Uh, they're uh, been, well, pretty much have been servicing North Fulton. Forsyth, Dawson, 
Lumpkin County, those are some of the areas uh, that they've been doing that. They've been started in 1993 in an old uh, mat schoolhouse on, on Bannister Road. So that's where it started out. But now you're no longer there. Uh, I think since 2001, you moved off to 400. And I always remember seeing your place because I don't know if they're still there, Skip, you can tell me. There used to be these big pink panthers that were right outside of, of your building that you couldn't help but see as you were going up 400 and that's where you were located. They are still there. Yes. That, yeah, I mean, you can't miss this, you know, when you see those things, and that's you, it's, it's flax flooring and that's all that. That's flax flooring, yes. Fan. We've been in that location since 2012, our second location we've been in on 400, so it's been a great Great spot for us. Everybody, yeah. everybody knows where the Pink Panthers yeah, are. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic marketing idea. I don't know if it was done on purpose or not, Skip, but um, it, it works for me. Uh, but before we talk more about that, tell us a little bit about yourself, Skip, and, and how you got into flooring and what you do. Well, I, I got into flooring um, in 1995. Um, my brother, uh, Mike Mangum, and Brad Flack were partners in uh, the Carpet Depot was our name at the time, um, and they needed to expand. They wanted to expand to Gwinnett County, so my brother was and Brad were going to open a store there. They needed someone to to um, run the coming store, so that's that's how I got my start in the flooring business. Wow! How many years have you been doing that now? Over 27 years now. Okay, wow. Okay, so we definitely got subject matter experts here in the room. So there's probably nothing you don't know or not seen in the flooring world. Well, um, there's probably something out there that I hadn't run across, but not not a whole lot I haven't seen. Not a seen. whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a little bit of, of help on that. I mean, I mean, I know what I've been in your location. By the way, it's, it's a beautiful location, and you got tons of options I mean, you can really walk around and see and feel and see everything which i think is very important when you're doing a purchase but there is also a lot of options so i mean where does where do i even begin if i'm looking for a floor well we do have a lot of options and some of those options may not be right for everybody um, but we will have a wide selection um, so the best way because it's it's very hard to shop for flooring online you know mm. uh, with everything online has become real popular but you can't really get an idea of the depth of the color or or the texture of a floor online you get a rough idea so the best way is by contacting me set an appointment up and we'll talk about your project. Talk about what your vision is for what you want it to look like when we're done. Um, and we can get you headed in that direction. Um, we'll be glad to walk you through it, finding the right product that's going to not only update your home, but up upgrade from um, builder-grade floors. Um, we do a... A lot of upgrading from builder grade floors because unfortunately what's put in by the builders might look good at first, but mm. it doesn't last very long. Yeah, see, I think that's kind of interesting. I mean, I think I overheard you working with a customer once and, and the husband just told the wife, you know, just get the cheapest thing. You know, care, just make sure we get the cheapest thing. And I think the advice was, well, you know, there is there is a cardboard. You know, and there's also dirt. In it. But, but the point is, is that sometimes it can be more expensive to get something cheaper um, than getting something more quality in the first place. How is that? That's true. Um, if you get a cheap floor, you're not going to get very much service out of it. It's not going to last um, very long if you have much traffic in your home and which, you know, Let's face it, most of us, we live in our homes. And if you're living on those floors, um, if it's cheap, it's it's not going to last long, maybe a year or two. And oh, then really? you're looking at going through the expense and the, the hassle of, you know, removing everything, moving all your furniture, moving all your knickknacks um, to be able to change that floor out. So if you're look, taking a long look at it as, you know, five, ten years down the road, it is well worth it to spend the money up front um, 
to enjoy your floors because, you know, you're living on them every day. You don't want to be two years in and they're really starting to show their age and you're embarrassed to have family over, friends over, because you don't want them to see your floors. Yeah. Plus, you're seeing it every single and day, And you're too. seeing it every know, day. You keep seeing it and say, oh, I can't stand aggravated. that. Aggravated. Yeah. And then you're mad at whoever sold them to you. And I don't want you to be mad at me about, gosh, these are terrible. I can't believe he put these in my house. You know, I was looking um, at our basement the other day. And, of course, we, we have our water hot water heater down there. And, you know, hopefully that thing will never go. But, you know, or sometimes there is a toilet that overflows or something. I mean, is there a floor that can handle that type of, you know, um, you know, if it's something catastrophic, um, maybe not. Uh, there are floors out. The The hottest floor out uh, probably for the past five or six years is LVP. Mm-hmm. It's waterproof. It will either come in a hardwood look or a ceramic tile look, or even some will even now they've got them and it looks like stone. Mm-hmm. Um and those, you can handle, you know, normal life events of water getting on them. Spill a Coke or... You know, yeah, something. if you spill something, dog bowl gets kicked over and you don't spot it for a few hours, it's no reason to be concerned. It's going to handle mm-hmm. that. Um, catastrophic event, yeah, you might have to change it out, um, depending, just because it gets under it. Um, but for everyday lifelong events that you have where your spills and and whatnot you know whereas uh some floors it might damage the the finish on them by being wet for a long period of time uh it's not going to happen with the lvp they're going to be able to withstand that um on that i was kind of you know people are shopping and they're often looking at per square foot and i'm sure you get people coming in there saying well you're not as low as is someone else per square foot but what does that mean by square foot and does everyone know what that means you know for the product versus the labor tell us a little bit about that there'll be it's kind of a buyer beware thing so correct uh there is a lot of factors that go into pricing um and the majority of our showroom of what we sell the most of our stuff out of is priced installed because most of our in customers are going to want us to install their product um and that's going to include you know prepping the floor because that's very important um prepping your subfloor underneath before putting the floor in mm. uh it's going to in- include like the quarter round um mm. a lot of times when you go to price at especially the big box stores they are not going to include that in their pricing. Um, a lot of their pricing is going to be just product itself because that's what they want. They want you to take it from their store and you put it in yourself to handle that because they just want to move it quick. They just want to move that product. They're, you know, sad to say they're really not concerned on what it looks like in your home, whether you're happy with the final project or not. Um, so that that is part of what goes into to the pricing um, and also the quality of the product. Um, there's a certain, I'd say, line that we have that we don't go below as far as quality of product because we have learned in all our years, um, cheaper is not better. Um, there's always a cost involved in it. Um, Cheaper, usually, it might not cost you now, but it usually costs you something else down the road. Um, And a lot of those products are not going to last. Some of them, it's very difficult to even get installed to begin with. Um, So that is why um, there's a certain line we don't go below. there. And there's retailers out there that, do that and that's fine we don't want to swim in that end of the pond that's just not our market so yeah when they come to you they know they're going to get something that they they can count on that's not going to last maybe a couple months or something like that which is which is good to know on all that just kind of curious is there anything you know trending out there 
the trends are still um, largely on LVP, but I am seeing with a lot of my customers that are homes that they are planning to stay in a while that's trending back to hardwoods or um, because, you know, it's just hard to beat the look of a hard, nice hardwood floor. Um, the LVP comes close, but it's not quite there. Um, and it, it, there's just no way humanly possible to make them look exactly like hardwoods. Sure. Um, so we have a, a good deal of our customers are trending back to hardwood. They've gone LVP in a home before, or maybe even the home we're installing it in and decided, you know, I want to go back to hardwoods. I really like the warmth and the feel and the look of the hardwood floors. Very good. Now, let's say someone wants to work on their flooring. What would you recommend? Should they they, they call you first? Should they just go to your location? Um, what's the best way to work with you guys? I, I would say um, it would be worth it to give us a call. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your project. Let's talk about what you're wanting to um, have that final product look like. Um, let's make sure that that we're the right um, retailer for you. Um, and from there, would schedule an appointment for you to come in the store, see our products, see what's out there. Uh, because our selection is so extensive, it would be difficult uh, not to come lay your eyes on what all our options are. Um, because you might be thinking one thing and, and see something that you like a lot better when you get in the store. Makes a lot of sense to me. And on that note, what's the best way that they can get in contact with you? Okay, best way to reach me, um, Skip Mangum, is um, my cell at 678-898-4483, or you can email me at skip, that's S-K-I-P, at flax flooring.com f-l-a-c-k-s flooring.com or i'm on facebook um and um linkedin they can reach me that way fantastic it was great having you on the show today and well, thank you Gary. Uh, great hearing you from your expertise on all of these things and i know you have a lot more that you can share and help people with going forward and i think that's fantastic well thank you I'm, i appreciate you having me oh yeah it was great great and now we have sales one two three with Gary Z, uh, where we have we have one person uh, per show uh, that one of our listeners that actually comes in with a question or a challenge uh, that they're facing, and I have them uh, and I give them some tips and some help with that particular challenge. And uh, this one today is uh, from Tracy, and this is what she wrote. Um, I was on a sales call the other day, and my prospect came right out and asked me, "How are you?" Or how are we different from the competition? What should I say? Uh, Tracy, that's, that's a great question from you and probably not a bad question from them either. But actually, it's not what you're going to say here, Tracy. It's what you're going to ask. And my biggest fault in my past before I was professionally trained with Sandler was I, I would say, oh, here's my green light. This is it. Now I can go out there and give all my features and benefits and I can have at it. She's, they, they want me to do it, so I would do it. And I said, this is where I can educate them. Um, that is not what we want to be doing here, Tracy. Um, actually, the best thing that we can do at this point is come back with another question. And a question may be, and being honest, hey, I could talk about that, how we're different for hours. I'm guessing you don't want me to do that. And they'll probably laugh a little bit and say, yeah, it'd be kind of nice if you didn't. Uh, so knowing that, how would you want to see that we are different from our competition? That could be a really good question. And, and what's going to happen is they'll tell you. And maybe in my world, it's like, well, we, you know, we want to know what we, it's your unlimited coaching that comes with what you do. And then I should probably ask another question there. Why is that important to you? Uh, tell me more about that. And as I get this information, it allows me to answer it and give them information on what's important to them. If I'm sitting there and giving all these features and then all of these benefits, a lot of those things may not even resonate with them, may not even be important to them. So the longer I'm going on, the more they're saying in their mind, yeah, this is not a good fit. Eh, we don't want that. That's probably yeah, not a good fit. We don't want to be doing that. So when that happens, 
ask a few questions like that. Tracy, thank you so much for writing in today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to our show today. Good selling to you. And thank you again, guests, for coming in. Happy selling. <music>